Hey everyone, in this video, we scape this 90p aquarium with freshwater plants and sand. And in the end, we get a pretty beautiful uh, end result. This is the tank just before I took it down. The old layout, which is pretty clearly overgrown, had been set up for about a year. In order to make a new layout, we had to strip this thing down to its bare bones. All the stem plants and the hardscapes were removed. The hardscape consists of driftwood and rocks. A lot of the hardscape had plants stuck to them. These are called epiphytes. I tried removing the fish here, but they were just too quick. So I took out more of the plants and then removed more of the water and sand before uh, fishing for a fish or catching the fish. Yeah, before catching the fish. Dang, breaking down that tank was a lot of work. Now that we have the tank cleaned out, Let's take a look at the layout we planned in the last video. So this large piece of driftwood that we took out is pretty essential for the look of the new aquarium. Since it was in use for the old layout, uh, we'll have to remove all of the plants that have grown on it. That's a lot. I wanted to see how the driftwood layout would look in the aquascape in its current state. So in order to raise up the bottom of the wood a little bit, we had to put some of the bottom layer in to raise up the driftwood. I replaced the bags of the substrate, which are just some old EcoComplete. It's pretty good for planting plants into, and it's inert, and it doesn't compact much. In this case, it's used for raising up the back of the layout. I also prepped the bags of EcoComplete with root tabs, uh, but I placed some cut up dried oak leaves that I find on my neighborhood walks uh, underneath the bags. I've never done this before, but I wanted to see if it would make my plants grow better. So this plant here is Crypt Balense, and it grows really tall and long leaves, and they kind of blow in the uh, current of the water. So, you know, these roots have grown directly into the bag of the substrate. So instead of removing the roots from the bag, I'm just putting the bag back. Anyways, the bags of Eagle Complete will help the layout by providing height to the background and will make the tank look like it stretches farther back than it really does. This gives the layout a sense of depth. I gave the sand a good rinse, which removed a lot of the waste in the organic manner uh, that had built up in it from the prior layout. The sand I use is a combination of uh, Supernaturals by Carib Sea. I use a finer sand mixed with some more rough sand, and that gives substrate you know some visual texture and some details to the layout in terms of hardscape I wanted to use driftwood so I have red moor root I have uh, some spider wood and a lot of series stone with the uh, substrate prepped and the hardscape collected, it's time to get scaping. So I was just about to start the hardscape and I kind of just decided that, you know, I think I need a little bit more uh, height coming across the middle here. Uh, extending into this back corner. So I'm gonna throw in one more bag of Eco Complete real quick. Just in terms of the creative process and what we're seeing here, or what I'm looking at when I'm going about and uh, putting in these uh, pieces of driftwood is that, you know, on the, we're starting with this, this is a triangular composition, okay? 
So that means the idea is that your eye starts in the top right and then follows its way to the bottom left. The extra branches aren't gonna be cutting across to the right. You know, they're gonna to continue to flow um, across, starting from the right and down to the lower left. So that's where I'm thinking about placement. Um, there is this piece of driftwood here that comes up, and so I may try and see if I can have something that branches upward uh, with it to kind of make it two traveling along the same vein. Uh, so we'll see. Um, what we get. You can also kind of see that here with this guy. This guy points up just like this one points up. So that's um, when you guys see in the time lapse, that's where my brain's at. I'm trying to make it look like a flowing, intricate uh, web of stick branches. Branches is the word I was looking for. At this point, I was just finalizing the layout of the smaller branches and trying to make them look like one singular piece. I ended up using a piece I had broken off of the main branch and reattaching it lower down to act as sort of a supporting branch. I feel like it helps to have your eyes follow from the main branch on the top right down to the bottom left. And then as I finalize the layout, I use some standard super glue to just attach the pieces of driftwood to each other. When the super glue is still drying, there's like a perfect opportunity to just shove some moss into it. And that helps blend the transition between the two pieces of wood. Uh, plus moss is like super cute and really fun. I don't exactly know why I started with the epiphytes, but that's what I started using first. I had some plans using the java fern and anubias. So I kind of just started chucking them all in. I got the big pieces in and then grabbed some of the smaller bits. There's a pretty nice piece of Anubias coffifolia that ended up drying out a little bit in the process. And uh, just remember it's always important to keep your aquatic plants moist when planting. Once I had the general idea of the epiphytes down, I had to sort all of these uh, planted uh, plants that I had pulled out from the old tank. On the right here we're throwing in some Ludwigia and some Limnophila. In this raised foreground, we're throwing in some Cryptwenty, and then we're throwing in more Rotala on the stem lens. I also had a lot of uh, Busa Philandra in some other tanks, so I ended up just collecting a bunch of those and wedging them into little crevices so that they could uh, grow with their little epiphyte roots. Busa philandra is a pretty beautiful plant. Uh, they're native to Borneo, and uh, they're named after Alexander the Great's horse, Bucephalus. So there's a little cloudiness when you first fill up a tank, but it's really to be expected. Um, once the tank's filled up, you just you can just chuck in a little more uh, plants, trimmings uh, into the substrate, and then uh, you know you turn the the filter on, and after a, a couple hours or a day or two, the tank really just clears up.
I knew in the future I would be picking up some Corydora catfish. These are beautiful little shoaling fish and they really love digging in the sand. As a result, they tend to flatten everything out. So for that reason, I wanted to install this, this little riser I've had for a few years. Also, not gonna lie, it lets me add more plants too, which is pretty cool. got my hands on these Corydora catfish. I got nine Sturbe Corydoras and I got them locally in Astoria off Broadway and at Tom's Pet Supply. A great little store there and uh, just quarantining them first and then they'll go in the tank. Finally got to add some of Imogen's Pristella Tetras to the tank which had been in a different tank for a long time. On the left-hand side of the tank, you may be noticing some botanicals like oak leaves, pods, alder cones, and then some driftwood pieces with different types of Busa philandra on it. I ended up changing the driftwood to look like they were part of the entire branch. And I also moved around some of the botanicals and leaves around uh, to make the left side of the tank appear less cluttered and more open. I really wanted the left-hand side of the tank to have an open feeling to it, but still have some interesting parts. These guys are really goofy and I'm pretty excited to watch them. With the quarries in, there's probably about 40 fish in the tank. Not gonna be adding any more for a while, but it's still gonna be really fun to watch the Pristella tetras and the, the rainbow fish, the neon tetras and the Corydoras in there. Uh, behavior over the next year and then it's also going to be really fun to watch the aquarium plants grow in and watch how the escape will change as the plants uh, fill in. <laughs> Just
just a little progression shot of the initial drawing just after planting and then five weeks after growing everything out. All right, guys, so that's the video. Enjoy the final uh, B-roll footage here. <laughs>